Hello everybody! Today I'm going to be doing a review of Robin Hood according to Spike Milligan. This is part of the Classic Adventures according to Spike Milligan series. Basically he takes these classic stories that are in the public domain and retells them with his own inimitable brand of like surrealism and wit I suppose. Dane reads. So uh, on the blurb here we have Welcome to the world of the classic adventure story Hilariously retold by legendary comic Spike Milligan Relive Robin Hood in which Little John becomes Big Dick And the Merry Men are joined by Groucho Marx uh, Groucho Marx also makes a, an appearance in his version of Treasure Island Which we'll be getting to soon I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs And then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end I will say I don't expect this to be a particularly long review Because I think my one of uh, Hound of the Baskervilles was like 5 minutes So we will see uh, and we start here with a poem by Alfred Noyes, Sherwood, 1903, but obviously told in Spike Milligan's voice. The good spirit of Sherwood, 12%, Sherwood in the twilight, is Robin awake? Grey and ghostly shadows are gliding through the break. Shadows of the dappled deer dreaming of the morn, dreaming of shadowy men in the winds of a shadowy horn. Aren't you bloody glad you're not bloody well born? Yes, yes I am. So we have here, um, uh, Big Dick instead of Little John. He uh, he wants to join Robin Hood and he says, let me come with you Robin and serve with you, pleaded the boy. Look, I'm old enough, I have hairs on my willy. Oh, well done son. And I might say, well hung. And uh, a lot of what I like about Milligan is these, these little one-liners So we have here. You go out, false and treacherous man, as you come in many years ago, plain Michael Tuck, no longer a brother of this order. If you show your face around here again, I'll shut the door in your face, the abbot had cried. I haven't got a door in my face. And here we get this joke, which I thought was funny the first time he told it, but he used it in uh, this, and then he used it, I think, four times in uh, Treasure Island. Uh, Robin went along a footway and fell into a deep river. Help, help, he said. I can't swim, I can't swim. And Friar Tuck was walking by and said, look, I can't play the violin, but I don't go shouting it around to everybody. Another great one-liner. Stop that man, cried Sir Guy, drawing his sword. It was a very good likeness. And we get this great line. <laughs> Greetings to you, good night, cried Robin, slapping him on the back. And good night to you, Robin Hood. What brings you here to Barnsdale, the arsehole of England, asked Robin. Yeah, it is a bit the arsehole of England. I mean, I don't know, I've never been there, but I imagine it is. And then we get a reference to Bexhill on Sea as well. And then Robin sets forth for Aspie de la Zouche in Leicestershire, which is not far from where I grew up. I always thought it was a great little place name. And then a little reference to Groucho Marx plus a circumcision joke. The sheriff fled the country. He's off to see his rabbi. I didn't know he was Jewish, said Groucho. Yes, he is. How'd you know? I saw him in the shower. And then we get a Judge Lord Webber, and this is a little Andrew Lloyd Re uh, Webber joke. Who is, uh, he's a composer of musicals. Funnily enough, his brother lives in the same building that my uncle lives in in Birmingham, but his brother's got like the penthouse suite. Did you, without malice or forethought, spray Lord Webber with champagne, said the judge. Yes, my lord, said Robin. Racing car drivers do it. Lord Webber isn't a racing car driver, said the judge. How was I to know that? asked Robin. Do you agree, Lord Webber, that you don't look like a racing car driver, said the judge. No, I look like a composer of successful musicals, said Webber. And then the final line of this. Made Marion marry Jimmy Savile, thus putting an end to his career. Jeez, I guess uh, Spikey Milligan. I mean, he probably had heard the accusations, because a lot of people had apparently heard the accusations against Savile. It's just nobody took them seriously enough to act on them, I guess. But yes, after Savile's death, it came out that he was a big paedophile. So, uh, yeah, that, that little joke didn't age too well. So overall, Robin Hood, according to Spike Milligan. I've never read the original Robin Hood stories. So I did try, actually, when I was young, and I just I couldn't get into them. Um, but I, did, I have seen, like, Disney's Robin Hood, and I'm fairly familiar with the overall legend. I actually think I probably enjoyed this more than I would have enjoyed the normal Robin Hood, but it was still just a 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. Quick little throwaway. Read it in like half a day. Uh, probably wouldn't recommend it to you unless you're either a Spike Milligan fan or like a fan of The Goon Show, which Milligan kind of did. I mean, Milligan was like a, a big influence on the Monty Python lot as well, and John Lennon as well. But uh, otherwise, if you're not into either Spike Milligan or Robin Hood, probably don't read it. Having said that, at least it wasn't marked by the racism, which kind of colours a lot of uh, Milligan's work, unfortunately. Overall, I would give it a 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it. That's what I made of Robin Hood, according to Spike Milligan. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.